In this video, I make a display base for my miniatures out of a toilet roll holder. Hello, this is Craig from bitsbox.co.uk. So, as I said in the intro, um, we're going to make a display base um, out of a wooden toilet roll holder. So, yeah, it's something I've wanted to do for a while and something that I have done in the past, a very long time ago, um, when I moved into this house. Um, we renovated the, the house and one of the things I took out of the old bathroom was this wooden toilet roll holder and I thought it's quite a good shape for a little display base. So I made a really simple one. It, was, it wasn't very good actually, it was very simple and basic. But I've always, since then, I've always wanted to make a video explaining how to make one yourself because these are quite cheap to get hold of. And you know, you might even be able to get hold of some for free or very cheap, um, maybe second hand. They're normally, they're normally in quite good condition, they don't really get roughed up. So, um, yeah, let's just get straight into it and I'll show you how I made a display base out of a toilet roll holder. Okay, so here we have our toilet roll holder. So, I bought this um, second hand off eBay, it didn't cost much, about £5 I think. And you can see it's just a normal sort of wooden toilet roll holder. We have screw holes in the back for mounting and some for um, holding on the actual sort of toilet roll mount and I'm just going to use a little electric screwdriver just to take these screws out because we only want this base panel. Of course you can use a regular screwdriver for this um, I'm just using my little electric one just for speed and for some reason there seems to be two screws in this side Um, you may wish to take the mountain screws off the back as well, I've just left them on and we're never going to see them. And this is what you're left with. And this will be our little base for the display and you can see there's some holes in there but we can cover them up. So, um, next thing to do is get the miniatures that you wish to have on your base. I'm using the Stormcaster Tunnels from Shadespire. And I'm just going to roughly put them where I want them, see if they fit, which they just about do. Um, so next up, just take a base the same size as the base of your miniatures. So this is a 40mm base. And I'm just sort of getting a tape measure here, just to sort of measure roughly where the centre is, so we can have one of these um, in the middle. And then um, use a panel pencil. Preferably a pencil, but I don't have one at hand. Just sort of mark roughly where the middle is. I'm not too worried for this example about getting things perfect. But if you're doing something like this um, for a proper display, then it's recommended trying to get it as exact as you can. And then it's just a case of drawing around these bases to mark out where your miniatures are going to go. So I did the first one there. And then I'm just going to try and measure where the centre point is of this, roughly. Um, again, I'm just being rough here, but if you want to be accurate, then um, I would recommend maybe just getting the metal ruler rather than a tape measure. So um, I've done this with the other two as well, and I've put it on a wooden block. And we're going to take our drill, and we're going to drill a hole in the centre of where all these uh, miniatures are going to go. So this is just a pilot hole, um, I do recommend putting a block of wood underneath, um, ideally you'd do this out in your workshop or something, not on your desk, if you have somewhere where you do all that stuff. So um, you don't got to go too deep with the pilot holes, it's really up to you, but, but you do um, definitely need, need them on there. So once you've got your pilot holes in, the next thing is to take a spade bit. This is a 40mm spade bit. Now, a good thing about spade bits, it's quite easy to get hold of 40mm, 32mm, and 25mm, which are all the standard GW base sizes. And it's just the case, um, I have a very, very naff cordless drill. It's not very powerful, so it doesn't go very fast. Um, obviously, if you have a faster drill, then you might want to clamp this down. And in fact, I do believe I do clamp this down even with mine, but once the, the spade bill, 
but spade bit, sorry, hits a wood, it will start um, forming a larger hole. And I think here, yeah, I just um, decided to clamp it, because you don't want this spinning around and and hitting you and what what have you. So, yeah, if you have a more powerful bit, a more powerful drill, you'll be able to do this a lot quicker, but I do recommend just taking your time doing bit by bit, because you don't want to go too deep. You sort of want the top of the base to be flush with the wood. And so you've got a little bit of wobble here, but you can always put some putty or something in there um, to make it more level at the base. And then once you've done all three, you have somewhere where all your miniatures can go. So there's a little bit of damage just between two of them where they're a bit too close, but we'll cover all that up in a little while. So I just put my miniatures in so I can see where they are. And they're looking pretty good. So I'm quite happy with their positioning. So, um, these pieces at the front and the back are where we are going to start adding stuff to our display base. Um, I filmed this a little while before I um, did the voiceover, so I can't remember all, everything I'm pointing at, but yeah, I want to have some bits of cork, and I've got little bits of the um, basin kit um, ruins as well. I mean, you can literally do anything you want here. Um, your display base can be anything you want to match your miniatures, but I'm trying to just gonna follow on this little bit here. Now my plan here is to actually use some cork and then do milliput over the top of it, just so I'm not using loads of milliput. Um, that didn't prove to be too easy to do. The milliput doesn't really stick to the cork very well, so I had a little bit of difficulty doing that later on in the video. But yeah, I'll just cut over, or just rip the cork pieces how I want them, and then I can stick them down. Now I'm going to take some PVA glue here, because I'm in no rush, um, really, for how long this will take to dry. Um, if you want something that will dry quicker, then you could hot glue this down, no problem. You could even use super glue, but I don't know how well it will hold. But PVA glue is very trusty, once it does dry after a while, it will give you a nice strong bond. It'll just take overnight to dry. So it's just a case of gluing these pieces where you want them, as well as gluing the plastic and base pieces down as well, and anything else you want to glue to your base. Again, I like to put the glue actually on the piece and then put it on the base and then just wiggle it around. Another good thing about using PVA glue is it gives you a little bit of time so you can move pieces around before it sets. So next we're going to do the same with these little pieces of the plastic um, basin kit stuff, these little rooms, and I'm just chopping one up a little bit. So yeah, you can just use these how they are, if you if you actually use them on your base, or you can chop, chop them up a little bit to make them look ruined. Again, um, I'm going to stick these down with PVA glue, um, I don't I really recommend plastic glue if um, only one, one of the surfaces is plastic. Um, plastic glue works really well to bond two pieces of plastic together, but not so much when it comes to bond, bonding them to other items, so again, hot glue or PVA glue. It's definitely um, recommended here. Again, the PVA glue does give you a little bit more time to move them about exactly where you want them before it will dry. So they're on, and you you can see the glue's still wet, but that's fine. Um, I've added some extra little pieces of glue around these so I can add these little basin rocks. Just to give you a variation when it comes to different um, stone sizes, rubble sizes, pieces of ruin, etc. And again, the PVA glue gives me plenty of time to push them into wherever I want them. Um, I don't know where I got these little rocks from. I've had them for quite some time. But it is worth just getting lots of different size basin materials if you really want to make good looking bases. 
Okay, so these pieces have dried, and I've also added a little Rowan from Skyball Miniatures, which has a couple of feet on them, and I think that's pretty cool. So next I'm going to do the Millipat work. So, yeah, as I said earlier, it doesn't really stick to this cork very well, so I think I do end up super gluing it down and then um, carving it how I want. So, yeah, I'll do, I'll do all that off camera. And what else I want to do is follow on the path that is on the base of this miniature here. So these pieces in between these rocks here will be the pathway. In hindsight, I should have done this first before I added all the bits of rocks and rubble. Because then I could have done a big flat sheet of milliput and then sculpted it how I wanted. Instead, I've got to sort of fill these little gaps in between. So, um, yeah, hindsight is twenty twenty, as they say. But um, if you're doing something similar... With your shades wire miniatures, then definitely um, melee part or green stuff for path pathway first. It'll be a lot easier. It does stick to the wood pretty well. And then um, once it's dry, this is what it'll look like. So I've got this little bit of path here, and I've also followed on the pattern on these bits here. So um, next up, we're going to take some PVA glue. And we're just going to cover the rest of the wood on the surface with PVA glue. And then we're going to take some sand or any sort of flocking material you want and just fill in the rest of all these little areas. So I do this piece by piece. Um, you could do the whole thing in one go if you want. And it's good to sort of overlap the milli part here. And that will make it look a lot better once it comes to painting. And I'm also going to add a little few little bits in the cracks as well. Again, you, you, could, you could do this over a box or something, that would be a lot less messier, but I don't mind making a mess on the desk for the purpose of these videos. And then once that's done and dry, you have something that looks like this. So it's pretty much ready for painting, and you can just brush off any excess little pieces. You don't really want it around this area here, but it does come off pretty easily, just wiping it with your finger. So yeah, and the last thing to do before we paint it is just to mask off this area here. Um, I have really terrible masking tape, so I do apologise, but just carefully um, work your way around masking off these areas. Unless, of course, you do plan on actually painting them, you might wish to paint the rim off the display base yourself, but I'd, I'm quite happy to keep it with this nice wood effect, as it looks quite nice. Um, as far as toilet roll holders are concerned, anyway. And here it is after it's been sprayed black. So you can see a little tiny little bit on the toilet roll holder wood there, but that's fine, I can remove that later on. And we just make sure our miniatures still fit. And um, yeah, so now it's just a case of um, painting the display vase. And here it is. So I've painted the greys and the greens to match the bases of the Stormcast Eternal. I'm really happy with how it came out actually. Um, let me put them back in. Looks quite nice. Sort of, they do match very well with the display base. I've kept that path um, sort of lined up pretty well on that miniature. Same with the stuff at the back. And here is just a final shot of the display base. So yeah, I'm really, really easy to do. Um, this is a very simple do tutorial. Um, if you can even call it that, really, it's just me sort of showing what, what I've done with the display base. Essentially, you just um, mark out where your miniatures are going to go, um, drill the holes, and then really you can just base it however you want to match your miniatures. And I think it looks really cool, considering it's just a toilet roll holder. Um, it's good to give it a sort of new lease of life. And it makes a nice little display for your miniatures. So yeah, um, something I've wanted to do for a long time. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And if you have, please do give it a thumbs up. And um, you can like and subscribe to our page um, if you haven't done so already. And um, all that's left to say is see you all again in the next video.